Sands, who is part of the folklore of Northern Ireland. Bobby Sands, whilst he was laying near dead, was elected MP for West Belfast. Uh, if you go into Belfast, you'll see a, a mural on the side of a wall, which is just Bobby Sands, 30 feet high. He's part of the folklore of Northern Ireland. He died by starving himself. There was a dirty protest. I won't go into details, but you can work that out for yourself. A dirty protest where they used to smear the walls with stuff. And they would wear blankets. Yeah, and the outrageous behaviour was just off the scale. But that was at this prison called the Main Prison. The proposition from the Northern Ireland government was we will now convert that into a peace centre. In fact, we offered to help. We said, if you want help, any help and advice from us, we will help you. But just recently, there's been a split between the predominantly Unionist Party and Sinn Féin, which is the Republican Party, about the principle of it being on that site. A lot of Unionists are now saying, we're going to make it a, a shrine where terrorists lived and died, and we don't want it to be a shrine. Sinn Féin don't see it that way. The main Unionist Party does. So it may now not ever happen. But you're right, I think Northern Ireland would benefit from having a facility like we've got here. Hopefully in Tripoli. Bringing back just one question to finish this with, um, no one from the IRA has ever been convicted of anything wrong. Can you tell me how to give a message to those terrorists that committed that act of atrocity that day? What would you say? Well, the only thing I could say is, do you ever reflect on the results of what you did? I mean, I can't believe if the man or the men are alive still that they don't know the names and faces of Timmy Gorham. The names and faces have been in the public eye for 20 years. So I cannot believe that they're still alive. They don't know who they killed. How they lived with that, I don't know. But I would want them to come and talk to me and to listen to the truth about how a family was devastated by the 12-year-old boy. And I couldn't speak for the Ball family, so I think it comes from friends and now both dead. But I'm quite sure the devastation was equally as great for them. But the, the simple devastation of a child's death I mean, if a child dies in a road traffic accident, it's tragic. If a child dies to ill health, it's tragic. These things sadly happen. You know, you expect a child to be killed in a north-west of England town called Warrington. A child to die is a terrorist bomb, isn't it? It's incomprehensible. It would never occur to you, but you know, that's the fate we suffered. Because Tim happened to be, he saved the penalty, he wanted the shorts, he went out, he stood in the wrong place, his friend Pierce was behind him. Pierce was deaf for a few hours. Tim's shield, Tim was left with a human shield for his friend. His friend wasn't physically injured at all. Shrapnel passed him, hit Tim. Pierce lost his hearing for a few hours because of the, the blast. He cut his hearing back. Pierce has since served two tours in the British Army in Afghanistan. He's a father of his, of his own two kids now. He's a great guy. Good Everton fans, so. but that's by the by. <laughs> but, you know, he's this is not a campaign to get to become Everton fans, but, but he, you know how life turns on fine margins. If Pierce had been in front of Tim, Tim would have lived, but that wasn't the way it was. And you never know what's around the corner with life, do you? That's the point. The simple point is, you do not know when your number is up. Tim didn't go out that day. Never imagined he would never come home again. I never thought I'd be carrying his coffin. I never thought I'd be lowering him to the ground lying on a bed with him when he died. All of that I've gone through. And the pain is unimaginable. None of you are parents yet. You will be one day. And you can imagine. You expect to bury your parents, not bury your children. So it's a hard, hard, hard life lesson. Yeah. And hopefully you, whoever is committed that day has just the, the shame <coughs> uh, to deal with them. And um, can only finish with just saying, thank goodness that Colin and his wife created this foundation for peace, not just for Warrington, for this country and in the lot of work that they're doing for us too. So can we show our appreciation to Colin for coming to us? Colin, thanks for having us coming and being with us today, sharing what must be a really difficult story and I, I, we, we really appreciate that. We also appreciate the work that you've done for Warrington and for the peace process and, and the influence that that's had in lots and lots of different ways. Uh, we haven't got 600 pounds, I'm afraid. 
But we, what we have got, you'll notice this scruffy bunch of stuff here. Yeah. And normally, absolutely, fabulously attired in perfect school uniforms. Yeah. You're not scruffy, you're not scruffy. <laughs> but uh, but we, we're in, not in uniform today because we wanted to raise some money for you. So what I'd like to do is present you with a cheque. Thank you. Uh, which will go s a small way to uh, all oh, the, oh, the good work that you're doing. All the fantastic results. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank Let's you. give Colin a